You ready? Oh, hold on, sorry. No, go ahead. There you go. I thought I was looking at them. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>
sila isipin. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. <clears throat> so perfect? No. <laughs> no. No again. <laughs> so we'll see if you're good in the morning or you're good in the afternoon. So I think you are not good at both on both times. So you should be taking the fist in at noon time <laughs> all right so question number one okay so this time we're going to talk about chf so i'm sure you're familiar with chf right so the question is all about how to remove water and we will conserve potassium so these are what we call potassium sparing uh, diuretic medication oh, so which of the following will be considered potassium sparing medication remember our our mnemonics which is the mad <laughs> m-e-d-d -D, right midamore aldactone derinium diacide so basically our correct answer is midamore aldactone and derinium a, B, C, C. So remember that in your, I'm sure we have that in our discussions in our pharmacology. So don't forget. Me, the more. Hindi ko alam yung diary. Naisip ko lang yung math. Nung muna, sir, LASIK sagot ko. Sabi ko, wait lang nalit. LASIK na sagot ko. Tapos ngayon ko lang lapas. Where did you pass? Alala ko yung TLBM tsaka math. Oh, but which okay. is which? <laughs> All right, so question number two. Oh, hold on, let me just. My car. My car's not starting. I've been going. What happened? My car isn't starting though, sir. <laughs> oh, maybe it's just the battery. Yeah, I left the headlights on. Oh, okay. I didn't use it yesterday, not the other day. <laughs> All right, so but don't forget question number one. They are potassium sparing, but if your patient has renal failure, nope. you cannot, right? Because they're already having issues with 
potassium. And then, what if your patient is also taking medication that enhance potassium? For example, lisinopril, right? So, if lisinopril and midamore will be given together, then you have to question the doctor's order or follow up with the doctor about it. Okay? So, number two, respiratory syncytial virus. For sure, and you're familiar about this since yesterday. Droplet. Droplet or contact? Contact, contact right? <laughs> wake up. It's a wake up call. <laughs> so your answer is because this is contact. So which one? Where can where where? Well, what will be the manifestations of this patient? Running, running nose. So, what's the best answer? <laughs> Contact with respiratory secretions. Mm -hmm. oh. nah. Letter C will be your best answer. Number three, the nurse received a post-operative thyroidectomy patient, which nursing action is important to perform. <clears throat> So if you have post thyroidectomy patient, what will be your most important? So there are three. There are several things that you're going to watch out: bleeding, oh, yes. right? Crisis, thyroid crisis. What else? Hypocalcemia. Not tetany or the thyroid crisis. That's your hypocalcemia, All right? Then there is a dressing on the neck. So tightness of the dressing could be one of the issue. But at this time, your best answer will be letter C. All right, so, so, so how do you check for bleeding? If the surgery is on this side, on top of the body of the patient, then it goes to the back. So basically, it's on the neck, on the anterior portion of the neck. So therefore, the blood goes to the back of the neck. Okay? So but when your patient is telling you about my dressing feels tight, then you have to remember that that's a priority patient because that is already airway problem. So what equipment is important at the bedside when your patient will undergo removal of the thyroid gland? Three. Tracheostomy kit. All right. So that's what you're going to remember. Okay. So, well, there will be some complications aside from difficulty of breathing. There might be changes of voice or hoarseness of voice, but it doesn't kill your patient. So, if there is bleeding and there is hoarseness of voice, your best answer in prioritizing your patient care will be bleeding. If that is hoarseness of voice and that is tightness of dressing, what's your best answer? Tightness, tightness of dressing because that's also airway. Okay, so let's go to number four. The nurse assigned to patient undergoing cardiac catheterization procedure. So which of the following nursing action has the highest priority? Determine the present pulse above the insertion site. Or is it apply warm compress to provide comfort? Check the quality pulse on the right and the left. Evaluate patient vital signs every 15 minutes. What's your best answer? If, if you answer letter A, it should be below the insertion site, right? Or this, yeah. So then it is apply warm compress. It should be called compress for that insertion site. Check the quality of pulses on the right and left. Yes, because you want to find out if there is a uh, good circulation. Letter C will be your best answer. Number five, which equipment is more important for the nurse to have available the bedside of a patient on ventilator? Letter A. That's your ambu bag. Bag valve mask. Okay, so remember yesterday we talked about ventilator. So a patient that will be on ventilator are usually unconscious. Or they're not able, usually in the hospital, right? They're unconscious. But if they're in the subacute care, they're already conscious, but they cannot breathe on their own. Though you have to remember that there are sounds that you have to monitor for patients on ventilator, the high pitch and the low pitch. And you know the reason behind high pitch. It might be because of kink and obstruction. Maybe it's time to suction the patient. When it is low pitch alarm, then it might be leakage or maybe dislocation and disconnection of the tube. So, but the most important, never mind the alarm, you have to check the patient's breathing first, right? So check the chest area. If it goes up and down, that means your patient is breathing. 
Okay? Then deal with the sounds after you are sure that the patient is alive. Then number six, Aranes or Darby Powitin Alpha. Remember your Epowitin, right? So if you think of Epowitin, what kind of medication would it does it do in your body? This will increase your red blood cells. So usually our RNS procrete, all right, epogen, they're the same family of medication. So how do you administer procrete or epogen or RNS? So remember it says identify the sites of injection. So usually it is sub Q, subcutaneous injection. So A is a correct answer, sub Q, thigh area. Is it okay to answer letter B? Subcubastus lateralis muscle? No. no, it's not because it's a muscle, right? Is it okay to, in to inject lower abdominal area? Yes. yes. Is it okay to answer subcube gluteus muscle? No. Wrong. So it will be A, C, and E. E? Upper arm. <laughs> so make sure that you know when there is a muscle it will never be a subcutaneous area right because it's already a muscle <laughs> so upper arm thighs buttocks so those are areas that you can assume as where the subcutaneous areas as well but of course best answer for subcutaneous injection will be lower abdominal area Okay, so next one will be number seven, a patient of profuse vomiting for four hours. We talked about vomiting yesterday, so it's going to be easy in your concept. How does it sound like? <laughs> when the patient is vomiting, alkalosis. When the patient is having diarrhea, acidosis right so that's the simplest concept to remember but otherwise if you read on your 7.5 of ph and your co2 is normal when the co2 is normal you consider that that a patient is suffering from metabolic already so then you look for the ph and you look for the bicarbonate if they go up together or they go down together because the respiratory is not an issue in metabolic remember so this time, because we know it's a vomiting, so what will be the best answer? E. Letter D. Yeah, metabolic <laughs> alkalosis. Yes. All right. So next one, number eight, the nurse is in the emergency department is caring for four patients. So which of the following patients be given highest priority by the nurse? What will be your best answer? Highest priority. So these are common questions in your NCLEX exam. And in fact, this is where we are having problems answering questions, right? So letter A, is that one of your highest priority? Maybe. Or is it DKA? Or is it the patient with ecchymosis? Or is it the patient who complains of having four water stools at home for the past two hours? If you go for letter A, abdominal pain and swelling of the arm, it's not a highest priority. They will not die with that. So we're looking for who will die? B or C. It is C. Or C. If you go for letter C, that's ecchymosis, pain, and swelling of the arm. It's bruising. Oh, bruising. Mm -hmm. So B. <laughs> So if you go for B or D, which one will be your best answer? B. Because the patient is DKA admitted one hour ago. So if you go for letter B, that's already being treated. Right? So while the patient is at home for the past two hours, four water stools, which one would be having issues? What do you think? What's your best answer? We are looking for two patients here that are suffering from dehydration. But which one would be having super dehydration? The one in the hospital that was admitted already or the one at home that was two hours, past two hours and no treatment at home. Right? So let's go for letter D. 
Next one, number nine, if the patient's serum potassium continues to rise in acute renal failure, the nurse should be prepared for which of the following emergency situation? Cardiac arrest. That's a very easy question. Number 10, a nurse in medical department is performing a daily assessment for African-American patients scheduled for cataract removal with intraocular lens implant. So which of the following question would be inappropriate for the nurse to ask on initial assessment? So this is African-American patient. What is the one that you are not supposed to ask them? Do you have a fam close family relationship? All right. So personal question is not allowed. Well, it's not only for African American, but you know, you are a nurse and you are assessing your patient. You don't you don't ask them about family relationship, Maybe. personal questions. But it's very specific in your African American. If it is different types of uh, culture that you are going to look for, your best answer will be African American. Number eleven, which of the following is a common problem in newborn of a diabetic mother? Select all that apply. B and E. Large for gestational age. What else? E. Letter E is hypoglycemia. Mm -hmm. They added meconium. meconium aspiration syndrome are usually uh, it's it's a complication when the baby is uh, is is not delivered on the exact time. So or they are delayed. big like this. So delayed. Del delayed a uh, time to deliver on the expected date of delivery so they are staying there and it, it they might already have a bowel movement which is the meconium so they get aspirated but that should be a complication not a common problem in diabetic uh, newborn baby bne BME only will be your best answer yeah so how do you know that the baby is uh, hypoglycemic already after delivery? Crying or high pitch cry. That means they're already crying. That means they're already hungry. Number 12, the patient had been diagnosed with aplastic anemia, which in the following statement of the patient indicates the need for further teaching, select all that apply. BCE. Eplastic anemia, that means everything is low. Low RBC, WBC, and platelet. So we're looking need for a problem. Need for further teaching. Is it okay to brush with soft bristle toothbrush? Yes. yes. I will avoid eating raw fruits and vegetable. Yes. yes. I am allowed to go and watch basketball game. Yes. If you are immunocompromised. So no, right? So that's a further teaching. So C is a correct answer. What about letter D? I have to avoid people with yes. cough and colds. Yes. That's a correct understanding. I am allowed to shop during the holiday. That's a need for further teaching. So there's only two correct answers, and that will be uh, C and E. What about, about, about it, raw fruits or vegetables or both? Both. Mm. Anything that's raw because they have I they may contain sure. bacteria or germs, right? I don't want to say Number 13, how should the nurse instruct the patient with angina on the use of nitroglycerin? I'm sure you are very familiar about this. You C. can easily answer that. Letter C will be your best answer. One tablet, a dish in a, then additional tablet every five minutes for a total of three tablets. Otherwise, you call the doctor or the patient should be in the hospital. It might be an MI. 14, the nurse should teach the patient that signs of digitalis toxicity include which of the following letter C. Remember, we talked about it and we said when it is about digitalis or digoxin toxicity, the main reason for that will be because of low potassium level and then it increases the digoxin level. Then there are two manifestations, eye problem and GI problems. Number 15, a and C. The patient verbalized to the nurse that she's allergic to latex. Identify the fruits that are known to cause similar reaction to latex allergy. And we have this listed in our discussions as well. We have kiwi, passion fruit, and chestnuts. A, C, and E. Yes. And you have that in your mastery notes. <laughs> Don't forget, those are the most common ones. So these are the actual uh, questions that our students remember in the actual test. Banana development. Strawberry. 
sa avocado. So th there is a lot of those. But the most common one is always kiwi, passion fruit, chestnuts. They're always in your test. <laughs> but remember, it doesn't mean that if you're allergic to kiwi, you're allergic to the rest of the fruit. Right? So you may be allergic to one of the fruit, then you're already considered allergic to latex. So what are the gloves that you are supposed to wear taking care of patient with latex allergy? The vinyl, the non-latex, <laughs> nitri nitrile gloves, <laughs> all right? And then when it comes to our <laughs> catheter, the catheter that we insert to our patient, make sure it's non-latex catheter material. So most of the most common ones are made of silicone. Okay, so number 16, the patient will undergo external radiation therapy for cancer of the thyroid. So the nurse provide client provides client teaching which should not be included. See. <clears throat> you will remain alone in the room, but you are observed and you can communicate. Which one is, that one is, you will be alone in external radiation. <laughs> the procedure is painless, it's also painless. Okay. D, you can immediately, you can also immediately resume, no, there is no residual radiation. Your best answer is supposed to be letter B. The procedure doesn't last for an hour. It takes only a few minutes. And it's in your discussions in your oncology. <laughs> right? So, <laughs> number 17. The patient has been diagnosed to have cancer of the cervix. So, she has cobalt implant in place. Which of the following statement when made by the patient indicates need for further teaching? C. I am allowed to walk and go to the bathroom. Okay? Because they are not supposed to. Is it because it might come out? It might come out. Yeah. It will be dislodged. So, they have to be rest in bed. Flat in bed, they are not supposed to sit, they are not supposed to stand up, they are not supposed to go to the bathroom. So, for example, if if I'm the patient, if I'm going to sleep this way, the radiation goes directly to the door. So people, that, the nurses or the family member that goes inside will be exposed. Isn't it usually the door is closed? Yes, so that's why when they open, you are facing them. So you should face the wall or face the window. All right, so just making sure that this part is not facing the door. Okay, so number 18. A patient with a DM asked the nurse to recommend something to remove corns on his toes. The nurse should advise him to? Podiatrist. Podiatrist. Okay, so remember you cannot self treat no self treatment for patient with problems on the on their nails on their toes because once the skin is open it might have a poor healing process. No right, and that, that will lead into gangrene and amputation. Number nineteen, a patient with acute appendicitis, the nurse should anticipate which of the following treatments. NPO. NPO, right? So all appendicitis, once they arrive in the hospital, they should be NPO, and you know the reason behind, for emergency surgical procedure. Do not apply, <laughs> do not apply warm compress, do not apply, do not, that may cause rupture, okay? 20, which of the following is most effective in assessing the patient with a head injury for development of DI, diabetes insipidus? So how do you assess how do you assess the patient with a head injury? Measuring urine output hourly. So after even a patient will undergo brain surgical procedures, one of the most common complications is diabetes insipidus. We thought that the most common complication is there is something that comes out in their nasal area. All right. So the CSF leakage. The CSF leakage is expected up to 48 hours, but once 48 hours is over and you still be able to observe the presence of CSF leakage, then that is a complication already. But at the start, when there is a problem of so much urine output, over 100 ml per hour, then the patient is suffering from diabetes insipidus. Okay, next one, number 21, which the following life-threatening complication will be monitored after administration of Lasix. 
what will be lost when you take Lasix? Potassium. So what will be the best answer? Muscle spasm. Number 22, which is the following patient should be seen first by the licensed nurse. They are all COPD. Which one is the highest priority? Asthma. Asthma. Number 23, which of the following patient is roomed in correctly by the licensed oh. nurse? Is it okay to have AIDS and C. diff? No. Is it okay to have measles and rubella? Yes. yes, they're the same. All right. Hepatitis B and pneumonia, no. Renal failure and VRE, no. They're, then you can cause contamination. So let there be. They're the same. Measles and rubella are the same type of uh, infection. 24. Which of the following medication will be questioned by the licensed nurse prescribed to a patient with renal failure? Diuvan, because that is. Diuvan is um, Sartan, ending of your generic name. Oh, okay. Sartan, because you don't know. <laughs> because you know Procrit, you know Epogen, and you know Vitamin C. Correct, you're right. It was between those two. I don't know. Right. Yeah, right. And Procrit and Epogen are good for renal failure, right? So the one that you have to question is the Diuvan, which is Sartan, which is what happens when you take Sartan? The potassium. The potassium level goes up. Okay, Sartan, ending of your generic name. Same with your Prills, ending of your generic name. 25, select all that apply. What is the priority nursing assessment prior to contrast administration? Select all that apply. We talked about it yesterday. <laughs> Sir, I did B and E, but I was contemplating on adding C. Yes, because uh, never toxic. Yeah, we talked about that yesterday. But it's just prior. Yeah, you have to check prior. You have to check for seafood allergy. You have to check for the kidney function. You have to check for the consent. <laughs> yeah, remember anaphylactic reaction. That's the reason why we have to make sure they have consent. So, yeah, so that's why you have to make sure they, they don't have issues with kidney because you need to, to remove that uh, particular contrast. 26. Which of the following tasks can be delegated to a newly hired LBN? It doesn't matter if it's a newly hired, you are an LBN. It doesn't matter if it's a newly hired, RN, it's an RN. So which one can be assigned to the LBN? Insertion of polycatheter. <laughs> yes, because you're already a licensed person. Your job should not be easier to the to the nurses that are already been working in that facility. You have the same job. <laughs> All right. So it doesn't matter if you are being oriented. Well, we know that you are an RN, you're an LV, you know, then you're an RN, give IV medication. So That's feeding okay. of Parkinson's on you. Same. Same. Yeah, feeding. Yes. 27. The patient is diagnosed with SIADH. SIADH is water retention, right? So which of the following patient statement needs further investigation? I know, right? So I need to drink two to three liters of fluids daily. That's a lot of fluids. And remember, you have SIADH. Okay, 28, which is the following personal protective equipment will be used by the nurse when taking care of the patient with C. diff, select all that apply. So there's only two answers, right? Because C. diff is contact, so gloves and gown. <laughs> so you have issues with infection control. 29, we're halfway of our no, test. No issues, <laughs> okay, so this is a patient on droplet isolation. So which among of this patient that will be isolated in droplet? Select all that apply. Rubella, letter B, which is German missiles. What else? Letter E, scarlet fever. So B and E only. Number 30, which of the following types of insulin will be administered by the nurse? To immediately lower blood sugar level, select all that apply. ADE. So, immediately lowers the blood sugar level. So, you have to have short acting okay. and rapid acting. 
Sir, yung may, That's it. may ano yun, regular. No, <laughs> it will take time. <laughs> so the ones that we give to, re to lower the blood sugar before meal is usually our regular insulin belongs to short-acting and rapid-acting insulin. Very <laughs> mixed and page and regular. No. And di ba yun? Depende pa. Yeah, but okay. it's mixed with uh, intermediate acting. So it will not lower the blood sugar immediately. That's why the long acting and intermediate acting and mixed insulins are given after meal, not before meal. All right. So 31, which of the following life threatening complication will be monitored by the licensed nurse after surgery? Seizures. So you have a life threatening complication after the surgery is hyperthermia and seizure. And what does that mean? Neuroleptic malignant syndrome. It is a side effect of anesthesia. It's also a side effect of antipsychotic medication. So it's not about infection that ha you're having fever. And it's not about any other uh, cause of seizures. But it is because of anesthesia side effects. Okay, number 32, which of the following patient can be safely roomed in to a patient with SLE? SLE is immunocompromised patient, right? Status lupus erythematosus, so asthma will be your best answer. Number 33, which of the following patients will be a priority to be placed in a private room? Varicella. That's your chicken box. 34, which of the following medication will be questioned by the licensed nurse prescribed to a patient with osteoporosis? Prednisone. So we talk about steroids. So see, if you, if you know your medications, you can easily answer that. So uh, taking prednisone can lead to osteoporosis. 35, what is the priority nursing assessment prior to cardiac catheterization? Bleeding. Bleeding, check your PT and PTT level. So there are, once the patient is found to be high risk for bleeding, oh doctor will give vitamin K injection. So an order will be given, you will administer the vitamin K. 36, which of the following tasks can be delegated to an RN? It doesn't matter if it's a newly hired, right? At least consistent answer. So which one is the best answer, Marlia? Allah. We oh, talked yeah. about that yesterday. And you already said that yesterday. You got it? Okay. Observe. This is a, a DM patient during self-injection of insulin. Observe kasi observe. Can an LVN change peripheral IV dressing? Yes or no? Yes. They cannot change the dressing for central line. But peripheral line. Yeah. Watch out, RNs. Your exam is RN. 37. The patient is diagnosed with Meniere's disease. Remember, we talked about it yesterday. What happens with Meniere's disease? Water retention. So, letter B. I love to eat carrots and celery. If you forget Meniere's is water retention, then you cannot answer it right. <laughs> yes, inner ear. So there is water retention, and that causes the problem for vertigo and dizziness. So other than that, there will be high risk for fall and injury. 38, it's about personal protective equipment. You are taking care of patient with multiple myeloma. What is multiple myeloma? Cancer of the bone marrow. What's your best answer? Immunocompromised. Mask. Right? Multiple myeloma is a cancer patient. So therefore, your best answer is must because the patient is isolated in neuro neutropenic isolation or reverse isolation. 39, which of the following manifestation confirm left CHF diagnosis select all that apply? BNP. So when you say left, it's all about air lungs or airway or oxygenation and artery. Right? So pulmonary edema is correct. Hypertension is correct. Those are the only correct answer. The rest are right-sided CHF. Any orbital sign? And around the eyes. Okay, so number 40, which is the following action by the licensed nurse is appropriate when taking care of patient with Felty syndrome. You remember Felty syndrome? So when a patient, this is a common problem with rheumatoid arthritis. So a Felty syndrome patient is immunocompromised with splenomegaly. 
splenomegaly and immunocompromise. So what will be the best answer? Letter C, offer freshly cooked food. Because they're not supposed to eat raw, right? No bacteria food should be given to them. They're isolated in neutropenic again. So which of the following nursing intervention is appropriate for patient diagnosed with myasthenia gravis? Remember, the myasthenia gravis can, has a muscle weakness. Alarm clock. Alarm clock. Why? Because you have to take the medication on the right time so you can eat and you don't have difficulty of swallowing. Difficulty of swallowing patient cannot, you cannot offer thin liquids. It should be thickened liquids. I was going to ask you. Why not thin? They will get aspirated. For people with difficulty of swallowing, they should not be offered with thin liquids. They should be on... Uh, Taken liquids. <clears throat> All right. So alarm clock is very important in patient with myasthenia gravis taking their medication on time, so that when during meal time they don't have a problem with swallowing. Forty two. Which of the following patient can be assigned to a licensed nurse from med surge floated to maternity? So if you are from med surge, you will be floated to the to maternity. Which one you can handle? Letter A. Right, so because you can you can inject insulin, you cannot uh, help out with placenta patient, placenta previa active labor, because they are unstable patient. Okay, forty three. Remember, in our floating, you can only be assigned to a stable. You cannot admit. You cannot discharge. And it should be related to your practice and experience. Forty three. Which of the following patient will be a priority to be seen first? So. Or C. Letter C. <laughs> C All right, because C is given IM and it's more, the absorption is faster than subcutaneous. And Lantus doesn't have a bad effect to the patient. It, it controls the blood sugar in 24 hours. Okay, you got it? 44. Which, uh, which action by the patient is correct when administering handheld inhaler? We talked about it yesterday. So, do you squeeze the medication into the tongue? No, you don't. That's why we need a spacer. You hold your breath for 10 seconds? Yes, we do. Do we allow 3 minutes hold before the next puff? Usually, our standard practice is 5 minutes. First, you um, 1 minute if it's the same. What do you mean? Same med. No. It's always five minutes apart. Remember, our medications in the eyes is five minutes apart. All our medication is five minutes apart. Our um, nitroglycerin is five minutes apart. So it's always a standard of five minutes apart. And you have that in your discussions in pharmacology. <laughs> 45. What is the priority nursing intervention when a patient is suffering from sickle cell crisis? Remember, our, our co concept is RWHOP. Rest, warm compress, hydration, oxygenation, and pain medication. Those are how those are arranged according to the way you manage the problem. R, which is W, go down. R W H, O, P. So rest. All patients with low in oxygenation should be on rest, bed rest, and then warm compress because they will complain of pain especially on the joints and then the next one is hydration then oxygenation then pain medication so what's the pain medication for adults motrin or the hydromorphone so morphine will be the best answer if there is no morphine any of your narcotic medication could do Right, but that's the reason for uh, pain medication, mo uh, morphine for adults, Motrin for pediatrics. The answer is A. I Number oh, why? <laughs> Brown bag are for patient with respiratory al alkalosis. You have to re-inhale the carbon dioxide. 
Okay, patients with anxiety, they will be using that brown bag. 46, which of the following tasks can be delegated to the unlicensed personnel? A or B. Unlicensed person, so that's your scene A, right? Applying a steroid cream, steroid. <laughs> <laughs> Collecting 24 urine specimen. So letter B. Number 47. Question. Can they put creams? They can put creams, but, but not a medication. Okay. Like liniment solutions or any creams like lotion, but not medication creams. 47. The patient's diagnosed with Hashimoto. We talked about Hashimoto yesterday. Is it hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism? Hypo. Hypo. So which of the following doctors order will the nurse implement? Cytomel. Centroid and cytomel. Symmetryl is for flu and Parkinson's. Relutec is for ALS. It sounds like... All right, side to mail. 48. Which of the following instructions regarding incentive spirometer is correct? Boy. Starting, start inhaling to raise the ball meter. All right? So you don't blow it. You inhale it. Okay? Next, number 49. How many ml of air will the nurse administer the patient to patient NG tube? Safe time. <laughs> so you are going to check for... Uh, placement. So, how many ml of air? 30. 30. The more the better because you need to hear. Right? What if 5 ml? Shh, you cannot hear it. Where is it? 50. <laughs> Which of the following religious practices is essential to observe when taking care of a patient belongs to Judaism and Seventh-day Adventist? Which one is common to their practice? Letter A. They don't eat scavenger food. So what is what are scavenger foods? Example. <laughs> Scavengers are garbage garbage collectors under the sea. They are seafoods. They are scavenger seafoods. No. So what are the example of scavenger seafoods? <laughs> Crabs, shrimps, squid. Fish with no scales, they are scavengers, but we love it, right? We have to line up in boiling crab or kicking crab just to eat those scavenger foods. They are the cleaners of the sea. So they are dirty fish, <laughs> dirty seafoods. All right, 51. What is the right, what is the priority nursing care of a patient with right CHF? B. Okay, weighing every day. Number 52, which of the following tasks can be delegated to a newly hired RN? Oh, what's your answer? Dog. Interviewing, observing, assessing is interviewing. 53, the patient is diagnosed with DM2 and renal failure is now complaining of hypoglycemia. Which of the following fruit juice will the licensed nurse serve to the patient? Hala. Great. Apple juice. Oh, see. Why apple juice? Why not orange juice? What's in the orange juice? <laughs> when there is a renal failure, you cannot give orange juice to your patient. Why? What is in the orange juice and renal failure? <laughs> potassium. <laughs> It has a lot of potassium compared to your apple juice. So it's safer. I know we always think of orange juice, but think first. Is the patient having renal failure? And besides, most of our DM2 are renal failure patient. So we're adding injury to the kidney. 54. Which of the following personal protective equipment will be used by the nurse when taking care of a patient with MRSA? Letter A. MRSA is contact, so it's only gloves and gowns. Okay. All right. So next one is number 55. Which of the following doctor's order will the nurse question or follow up? 
<laughs> Sartan. Oh, Sartan. We'll see. Oh, what is pyridoxine? Vitamin B6. Okay. Vitamin B6 is not good for Parkinson's patient. They will inhibit the absorption of anti-Parkinson's medication. Okay, so make sure. So regular insulin for them is correct. Phenergan, for initial and vomiting is correct. Atacand or Sartan medication will be correct in your patient with hypertension. Otherwise, vitamin B6 or pyridoxine is not good for patient with Parkinson's because they will inhibit the absorption of all anti-Parkinson's medication. 56. Which of the following patient will then license in our seat first? Boy. Correct, because that's already 88%. So you learn your lesson. <laughs> so 88 is unstable patient. All right, 57, which is the following nursing intervention will place a patient in a life-threatening complication after femur fracture. Realigning. realigning. So always remember, whether it's not a femur, all bone fracture, you should not realign it. Very well, the biggest issue with femur, it's the long bone. Right? When long bone is having a fracture and you realign it, it will dislodge a fat, causing fat embolism in your patients. It's a danger action. 58, which the following patient can be safely recommended for discharge? Dog. Dog. Right? So just inject the insulin and the patient is okay. 59, which of the following patient will be a priority to be seen first? A. Yes, it's that, that's one a one hour. hour. Remember the bleeding, the crisis, right? Yeah. The, the dressing. Number 60, last question. Oh, what is this, atrial or ventricular? Atrial. What's the drug of choice for atrial problem? Amiodarone. Count your scores. I <laughs> Count your scores. <laughs>